Hello guys, welcome to High School Physics. Today we're doing electricity. We're going to look at resistance, we're going to look at current and voltage, and we're going to look at a couple of other things as well. So as some of you know already, we're vaguely following the Cambridge syllabus, CIE, and uh, the code for that is 0625. But this is just physics, guys, so it just works for any syllabus. Right, here we go. Today we are going to try and understand resistance in terms of voltage and current. Yeah, we're going to plot some graphs for these devices. We're going to do a little experiment. Oh, no, do an experiment, we're going to chat about it. We're going to look at this equation, the power equation and the energy equation. So lots to get through. And uh, let's crack on with this now. Here we go. Right, resistance experiment. Okay, this is a classic one to do at uh, school or college. Okay, this is a, a good old favorite one to do. And um, in order to measure resistance, you've just seen we need to measure voltage and current. Okay, voltage and current. Come on, let's work your magic, stay in focus. All right, so nice little experiment. We need a voltmeter and an ammeter. And the easiest way to set this up, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Um, we get our power supply like this, okay? And we can connect it, we can have a switch, why not? There's usually a switch in the power supply. We can ping it through an ammeter. We can go down here, put a resistor in the circuit of value we don't know. And put a voltmeter across it. Okay, keep it simple. And this could be DC, why not? And it could be zero to 12 volts. Okay, and all we're gonna do is, we're going to switch it on, change the value on our power supply to six different readings. Okay. Jot down the data, plot a graph. Once we've got the data, we plot V against I. Okay. And it should be a straight line. Okay. Now, to do this nice and scientifically, you could do it three or four times for each reading, take the readings. Okay, the more data we put on here, the, the better it gets. And don't expect everything to be on the line, guys. All right, that's just unrealistic. So expect your data to be dotted around here and there. Okay. And if you end up with this type of thing, that'll be fine. Your best fit line, don't put it through the last point. The last point isn't always the most accurate. All right, just put about the same number of pieces of data on either side of the line. If you get one over here like that, just check it out. Make sure you didn't read the wrong numbers off the meters. Okay, so if you get an um, anomaly, just check that, see what's going on. And once you've done the graph, we can take the slope. Okay, and the slope, we're going to say that A over B and resistance is equal to the slope A over B. That's it, measured in ohms after George Ohm, who fiddled around with it many, many years ago. Right, that's it. Yeah, let's take your lesson or so. And um, if you use a resistor, you get this type of graph. It's a straight line. It obeys Ohm's law. It's a nice linear relationship. But if you were to take this out and put in a lamp or a bulb, the same thing, this is the same thing, okay? A lamp or a bulb, do the results again, you would end up with, a curved line, which is, I'm going to write it here, non-ohmic. Okay, so these here are non-ohmic. All that means is it doesn't obey, doesn't obey Ohm's law. It's not a straight line. Okay, and as it gets hotter, more current makes more heat. As it gets hotter, the lattice vibrations go up. It's more difficult for the electrons to get through, and the resistance goes up because the resistance is the slope of the graph or the gradient, okay? Now, if, if the black line was a hill, it'd be nice and steady climb. If this was a hill, this would be like a volcano. Okay, if ever you've climbed up a volcano, the closer you get to the top, the steeper and steeper it gets, okay? And the steeper the slope, the greater the resistance. Non-ohmic lamps and ohms follow, uh, resistors follow Ohm's law. Nice straight line. Moving on. Okay, if you're doing an experiment with uh, 
resistors in it and and you you can increase the resistance what happens to the current the current ooh, use my other pen goes down as the resistance goes up the current goes down if the resistance is constant as the voltage goes up the current goes up okay so if you want to limit the current more resistance what's under there okay you'll never know right moving on resistance of a wire now i could get you a piece of wire and we could um plug it into a multimeter and we just move the the the, the little connections along with the multimeter and as the length goes up the resistance goes up so if you've got a piece of wire resistance is proportional to length okay so always think of electricity if you want to get your head around this guys think of it as a pipe if you've got a pipe you've got a hose pipe in the garden you're putting water through it water current current yeah so you can see the kind of similarity here it's, it's just an analogy all right that's all it is if the pipe is longer the longer the pipe gets the more difficult it is for the water to get through so the resistance goes up with length but it's the same with electricity okay similar type of idea the longer the pipe the greater the resistance the shorter the pipe easier it is for the electricity or the water to get through same with the wire um the resistance is proportional to length now sticking with pipes guys if we had a pipe nice big fat pipe like this the water would get through easier yeah we can easily get the water through there the same thing happens with a wire with a wire guys as the area i'll show that well we'll put it here as the area and what i mean by area is actually the cross sectional area that is if you looked at the end of the wire okay so or the end of the pipe the cross sectional area is that piece at the end okay so it's that piece in the end there that's the cross sectional area yeah there as the cross sectional area goes up the resistance will go down guys take a look in the bathroom if you don't believe me all right the fresh water comes in a nice thin pipe because there's not much resistance there and on the back of your toilet or somewhere in there there's a big fat pipe about four inches across yeah because we don't want anything there to be hanging around we want the least resistance possible to get that out of the place okay so you see it with water pipes and it's the same with electricity as the cross sectional area goes up the resistance goes down so if you've got a big fat wire it's got less resistance a little skinny one okay so for this r ah, ah, is proportional to one over a now we're quite lazy in physics you know that guys we're a lazy bunch because we're always using formulas we're not writing everything down we're not going to write a sonnet about this or something yeah or an essay not actually really lucky and as the area goes up the cross-sectional area the resistance goes down so now we've got this we've got r is proportional to l over a okay now we want to get rid of our little fish here don't we yeah we're not too happy with the fish we want an equal sign and to get rid of our fish and turn it into a sandwich we need to put a constant in there okay and that constant is we've used this letter before okay yes well done you guys if you've remembered that it's rho it's that greek letter okay now it's not density it's the same letter, but it's not density. <coughs> it is something called resistivity. It's got an easier name. We also call it specific resistance. It's a constant. For certain materials if you've got copper you've got pure copper it, it's just a value okay 
the unit for it is, you can work the units out yourselves, but um, you will figure out pretty quickly, the unit is ohm meter. Not ohms per meter, ohm meter, all right? It's just a constant. It's just to take our equation from a fish into a sandwich, okay? It's our constant. You're usually given that number. In an exam, you'll probably be given that number and have to work out the length or something, okay? So it's, it's not as scary as it looks. Uh, the numbers tend to be quite small, right? They tend to be very small numbers. So um, it could be 10 to something, 10 to the minus six, 10 to the minus eight, that order of magnitude. Um, and that's how it works. And the way they're gonna catch you out in the exam is they're gonna say, here's a piece of wire, the resistance is X, and their wire is gonna be three times as long, and it's gonna be four times as uh, big in terms of area, the area, the cross-sectional area is gonna be four times larger. What's gonna be the new resistance? Aha, uh -huh. now that could be a bit tricky, but we do need some tricky physics, don't we? All right, to keep us on our toes. So rho, not density, specific resistance, resistivity it's an unusual word okay you lovely bunch moving on we have power oh and on this one here guys if you wanted to do this as an experiment then uh, there's lots of ways of doing this and um as an experiment you could set this all up um with a power supply okay and the usual setup, we go through an ammeter, we'll put a switch in over here, and um, we'll put an ammeter in there, and we'll put our wire in there. Okay. And then we can measure our voltage across this. Now, you can measure the cross-sectional area of the wire by using a micrometer. You've heard of a micrometer. Yeah, or you can just take the gauge off the, off the, the reel, the wire will come on a reel, it'll have a gauge on it, you can work out the cross-section area. So we calculate that, or we use a micrometer screw gauge. You measure the length of the wire, okay? And then the resistance, well, you just take a few readings, you close the switch, take a few readings, and you've got it, you're gonna plot a graph of V against I, and then you work out the resistance. Then you change the wire and do the whole thing again. And different length, like a shorter length and a longer length, okay? You get all these different values for the resistance of the wire. You can key, key those zero in, area, length, find out, row. Nice little experiment. You need about five sets of data for each line. Maybe six would be great. Don't do dots on, on your real graph, do little crosses, okay? You know that, you don't need me to remind you. You should be doing crosses, not dots. and do that experiment. I mean, you, you could do it much easier. You could just put a multimeter across the length of wire, write down the resistance, change it right down the resistance, and just use a multimeter. Where's the fun in that? That would be too easy. Okay, so standard experiment, lots of graphs. The more data, the better. Okay, power. The power equals the current times the voltage. Okay, and the power is measured in what? The power is measured in watt, which is a joule per second. Okay, so a watt is a joule per second. All right, so a watt is a joule per second, P for power. Guys, I have seen this written down as E. I've seen this written down as W. Um, I've seen this written down as J. Um, uh, just be careful. There's lots of different symbols out there which people use to, to confuse us. Okay. So um, just, be, just be watching out for that, guys. And the J is the joule, all right? And then if the joule, we know that's a measurement of energy, okay? And we know that watt is a joule per second. So we could write this down as a watt being equal to the amount of energy per second. And therefore, if we write down as a watt as the energy per second, we can take the energy per second is the same as the power, okay, which is watts, all right? And therefore, that's equal to IV, which is the power, 
I, I know there's also different symbols flying around, but that is the power that's from here. Okay, so from here, IV equals E, and that seconds we can call time. Okay, so we can change it into time. We can change that to time. All right, because it's joules per second, so it's energy over time, energy over time. And therefore, the energy would be equal to I T V. The energy in our electrical circuit is going to be equal to the current times the voltage with a little bit of time squeezed in the middle there. Remember, I already told you this, it's seconds. Okay, seconds. Right. There we go. Is that everything? Looks pretty good to me. Okay, nothing under here, guys. This is just us recycling and using our sheets again. Okay, it's just little scribbly notes under there. Uh, why? Why is that there? Okay, so you haven't missed out on anything at all there. And electrical resistance, have we covered all the bases? Well, let's take a little look and see. I think we have. We have got R is equal to V over I, did the graphs for the lamps or the bulbs and the resistor. We mentioned the experiment for that. We mentioned the experiment for this. Uh, we looked at the power and um, that's energy per second. And we changed it around to do this equation. What's under that one? What's under there? Security systems. There you go, guys. So now you know security systems. We have reused their file. Thank you guys in security for throwing this our way. We really appreciate that. Everybody else, well done. I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, ask the person next to you or stick a little question in the question box and we will see you soon. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>